So, you've just been told that uh, I'm a lecturer, and uh, as such, I get to teach, but I also uh, get to have really interesting meetings with uh, very bright students about smaller and bigger projects. And this one is one of those, just from about a week ago. Now, we were discussing some project that I will actually tell you about. And if you look at it, you will see some bright, happy students. And you will also see the standard laptops on, on the table. But you also see something which is a little unusual. And if I zoom in, you will see better. Now, this, just to make sure we understand each other. This is not how I normally have my uh, student meetings. But this was actually brought by the students to celebrate a special occasion I knew nothing about when, when I arrived, when I entered the room. And uh, I was surprised. I was actually very pleasantly surprised. And I was surprised because this is not normal. Yeah, this is unusual. I don't normally enter a meeting with my students and a bottle of wine and is sitting there and glasses are already poured and we're all drinking happily. I mean, this is not how it normally works. But what's normal? How do we define normal? How do we define usual? Now, I'll just show you a couple of things, and I know that I might actually travel on dangerous grounds and surf on dangerous waters, but let, let's see how it goes. Now, this is also a pretty general statement. And you might find lots of counterexamples, probably not in my case, but it's clear, actually, if you search Google with this, you will come up with almost all counterexamples. Another general, very general statement is this. And it's true, it's true. I might behave a little tonight, but I am Italian, and I use my hands a lot when I talk. So. There is, this is another big generalization, yeah, which is true to a point. And how does it come about? It comes about by what we normally do. And for what I'm interested in, and I'm going to tell you in a second, it also comes about uh, by what we normally say and what we normally write. Because what I'm interested in is actually language and words. And more specifically, I'm interested in how we can actually teach machines to process the language that we speak and that we write. Like, can we teach a machine to understand like English and Italian and Dutch and so on? I mean, you probably all use Google Translate. So that's what I do is also behind that kind, that kind of stuff. And why does this have to do with generalizations? Well, because to teach machines something, they need to learn from very general patterns. And in this specific context, what I want to tell you about is teaching machine to do a very tricky generalization, which is being able to tell from a piece of text who the author is. But not just like specifically who the author is, I want to profile the author. So what does it mean, profiling? So you give me a text, I give it to the machine, and I want the machine to be able to tell whether it was written, say, by a male or a female, or a younger person or an older person. We can also try to profile like, even more difficult things, for example, personality and so, but I'll stick to gender and age, especially gender. And what is the underlying assumption for this? And this is why generalizations are interesting. So if I can teach a machine to tell whether a text was written by a female or a male, that means that males and females write texts differently. Now, is this true? How many of you think this is true? Ha ha. Now, what I did to start with, there is a tool at the uni that was developed at the University of uh, Trento in Italy that takes a very, very large collection of tweets, and you can just check what are frequent words used by male or females. Now, again, careful, because this is something that could look a little dangerous. Let's check one. Now, this is the tool, Tweet All Life. <laughs> now, this is not made up. Yeah, this is a collection of tweets. And it looks like 
men tend to talk more about beer than women, and women tend to talk more about tea than men. Now, how stereotypical is this? Now, wait, because it gets worse, or better. Uh, these are other words that I put in. You can try a lot. So you can just actually see how you go from ballet to volleyball to football to tech. And now the gender balance is getting really skewed here. So there's another study that was done on Facebook. And some uh, researchers collected female pages on Facebook and male pages on Facebook, and they built word clouds. You probably have seen word clouds. You can visualize the most frequent words like bigger and the less frequent words smaller. Now I'm going to show you a cloud now that was built by some researchers on Facebook pages. And you can try to raise your hand if you think this is a female cloud. OK? I'm going to show it now. How many of you think a female cloud? <laughs> there you go. Now I'm going to show you the male cloud, but quick. Yeah, and you prob probably see why. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And I swear, this isn't made up. This is real data. So I was actually curious, because this is so stereotypical that it's kind of scary. And so I was really curious, and I found out something that, that I thought was actually interesting, which is this. I went to check how much the word stereotype is used by female and male, totally gender balanced. I thought this was very interesting. Now. Why do we kind of use this information? So if, if it's true that men and women use these different words in such a clear way, then if I tell a machine, come on, just look at the words that are used, and I give it a lot of data to learn from, it will eventually come up with its own generalizations. Now, mind you, we're giving machine data. We're not telling machine, like, look for beer or look for T, or look for tech. We just give it a lot of data. And the machine will know this data is associated with male, this data is associated with female, and then it will make its own generalizations. OK? Now, we don't only use words. We also use some other hints. Now, for example, one thing that you might not know, what is the difference between these two? Yeah, the nose, yeah? How many of you use that one with the nose? Huh, now, you might not know that, at least in the social media world, you count as old. <laughs> <laughs> what we can tell a machine is because we don't need to, 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 to say, you know, look at specific words. We can also say, you know, look at sequences of characters. Yeah, so they can also spot some hidden patterns that we might not be able to see so straightforwardly. Now. There was, so if we, if we teach this to machines, are we teaching machines to recognize, basically, stereotypes as much as we seem to use? Now, there was a study that was published uh, last year at a major uh, conference in computational linguistics. And the people who did this study aimed at checking exactly this. So they took a system, and they took people, and they made them assign gender to the same data. Now, what they found, they found actually three very interesting things. So number one, I have a quote from the paper, which is this. So humans, they found out that humans relied on correct stereotypes, but relied on them more heavily than warranted from the data. What does it mean? That they overgeneralized on the beer and the tea and the volleyball and all the tech and so on. Yeah. So what happens here is that we are loaded with stereotypes, and we actually use them in our evaluation of data. So if I want to say, if we ask around, apparently this was like used too much, the stereotypical information. Now, so they, they make assumptions of that kind. Now, the other thing, though, that they found out, the second thing, which is very interesting, is that nevertheless, humans can tell gender pretty well in about 75, 80% of the cases. How about machines? Approximately the same. Now, machines can tell gender in approximately 75, 80% of the cases, depending on language, depending on the texts, and so on. But the third thing that they found, and it's the most interesting one, 
is that if you take a combined approach of humans and machines, you get the highest accuracy. What does this mean? It means that machines and humans do not see the same things. Yeah, you can think about it a bit like that. Yeah, there's a correct bunch that both machines and humans will see, but that decides there are correct cases that the humans will be able to judge and others that the machines will be able to judge. Well, isn't this interesting? Yeah, you might not completely expect this. Now, why does this happen? This is because we do teach machines to look at words, but we don't say which words. Yeah, they generalize over something that we might not see. Like, for example, do you know, did you know that um, women, apparently, tend to use more pronouns than men? Now, if you don't know this because you're not involved in this kind of, in this field, why would you start to look at the text? You know, oh, there's more pronouns, maybe it's a woman. But the machine will learn this. Or sequences of characters. Yeah, specific sequences of characters that might be typical of a younger or of an older person. Yeah, we might not notice them, but a machine will learn. Now, I want to just show you another example that doesn't have to do with language, but it's a very, very, very related thing. So now, do you know what this is? Yeah, you've seen it, you've seen this. Now, this is a match between AlphaGo, which is a system that plays Go, made by Google, and Lee Sedol, champion, super champion. Now, they had this match, Sedol lost. Not all of the games, but four out of five. Now, there was a point in a game where AlphaGo did something really odd, totally out of the usual, completely unexpected move. So he placed his little thingy somewhere where, like, you know, no human would ever do this. And the commentator, actually, at first confessed later, thought, it's a mistake. Went bonkers, right? It's just completely wrong. This is not a real artificial intelligence machine. But later, something happened, right? Later, he realized it did make sense. Yeah, so at first, what he says is this, like, it's not a human move. It's not. It's totally, totally out of place. But later, what he notices, it makes sense. And the reason why it makes sense is that because the patterns that this machine has learned are not necessarily openly in our view. They might just not be there, but they are there. Yeah? And what I, what I really like about this is what it goes on, yeah? because it says, you know, AlphaGo learns also from itself. So the machine improves, but people also improve, humans improve, because they learn from what actually the choices that the, the machine does. Yeah, and then this is what, how it continues. You know, the commentator is reporting this other guy saying, you know, that makes him happy, you know, so beautiful, he says, this is so beautiful. And I totally agree with that. I mean, this is really beautiful. Yeah, we might be actually helped by machines to even overcome some of our normal thinking, usual thinking, possibly even stereotypical thinking. Yeah, we have a chance. So I was thinking about this thing in terms of rise and fall, and I know that lots of people are kind of scared by AI taking over, like how much is no alpha go beating the man. This is really bad. It's not bad. It's a chance, it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity that we have. And this is, a, this is a, a piece on The Economist that was actually talking about this, like, you know, rise of the machines, artificial intelligence scares people. And they say, excessively so. We shouldn't get scared. We should welcome this. Yeah, we make these machines. I mean, we program them, and we can get a lot out of them, not only in terms of like, how useful they are, but also how much they can teach us, even in creativity. You know, mind you, they're also, they're very powerful, but there are things that they're not very good at. Now, for example, there's, um, this is a, a tweet. And if you read it, I'm pretty sure you understand why I put it there. Yeah? Now, this is a sarcastic tweet. And 
it's something that for a machine is still extremely hard, extremely hard to get because it relies on some knowledge of the world that the machine uh, has difficulties in acquiring. It doesn't mean that machines are not creative. Apart from the AlphaGo match, which I find extremely fascinating, there's also a really recent experiment that I saw the other day on the web. And there's a, a researcher who trained a machine to produce new names for color patterns, for color patterns, right? And then, after several iterations of this learning, some really, really funny names come up. And these are not names that we would come up with ourselves, because they're odd. But come on, I, sh I, I put some here. So, yes. Now, there's even Cindy's poop at the end, and Light of Blast, and, I don't know, Tommy Beige, and Sink. I mean, these are really kind of odd names. But if you think about it, it you know, why not? We couldn't have, a, probably we wouldn't come up with this ourselves. But why should we get like uh, afraid of embracing actually some additional creativity that machines can, can give us? Yeah, it's, it's a different point of view. We should welcome this. We can learn a lot. And why not? We shouldn't get, we shouldn't get scared at all. So I really uh, hope that we can welcome machines, not just as useful tools, but also to provide a point of view that is potentially a little different than what we are stuck with at times. And of course, this is also something that you can do yourself, right? It's not just the machines. You can just once in a while introduce something different in your lives, just change the way you view things. Like, you know, the, I really have to thank my students for what they brought the other day. It was such a surprise. And it, this is not just a, a thank you for the wine. It's more a thank, which was nice, and it was a very productive meeting, but it's more a thank you for, for the novelty for, for breaking the schemes, for not just always sticking to the same meetings. You know, let's do something different. We can do it ourselves, but we can also, you know, get some help from machines to introduce some novelty and some unexpected in our lives. Thank you.